Hi, in this video we're going to talk about the intermediate value theorem. So intermediate value theorem. And I'm going to state the theorem. We're going to talk about what it means intuitively and then we're going to do a simple example of how to use it. And there's many ways to apply this theorem. You can apply this to a variety of problems. We're just going to pick a simple example. So the intermediate value theorem says that if you have a continuous function, so suppose f is continuous on, let's say, a, b. So we have a continuous function on a closed interval. And I can use any variable here, I'll use n. And n, a number between, that means between, f of a and f of b, where f of a is not equal to f of b, so these are different. Then, so if you have these things, a continuous function on a, b, n is some number between f of a and f of b, and these are different, then the intermediate value theorem says there exists a number c, so then there exists a number C in the open interval, so in AB, such that uh, F of C is equal to N. Okay, so when you see it in words like that, it's like, okay, what's going on? What is happening here? Let me just give you a quick picture. So, so this is the y-axis. This will be the x-axis, so this is x, this is y, and let's say this is a, and this is b, and let's draw a picture of our graph, so let's say we start here and we do this, and so this here would be f of a, and this here would be f of b, so we have just a fake continuous function which I just made up and drew, so it's continuous, so it has no holes or breaks. So if you have a continuous function on AB, which we have here in our beautiful picture, and N is a number between these, and these are different. These are definitely different. So it just basically says if I pick a number N between these, that there is a number C in the open interval such that F of C is equal to N. And certainly that's true. If I pick this N here, this corresponds to this Y value, and I can find some number C in the interval such that F of C is equal to N. So it basically says a continuous function on a closed interval takes on every intermediate value. So I can pick any n here. I can pick any value between these, and I'm going to be able to find a number c. Note that in some cases you'll be able to find more than one number. For example, let's say that I draw that same picture. So again, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, and this is a, this is b. And let's say I do this. Let's say we do something like this, right? So in this case, this is f of a, and this would be f of b. And say I pick n here, then I get one, two, three places where I have three different c's. I get a c1 here, a c2 here, and a c3 here. So in this case, there's three values of c that give me n. So in this case, f of c1 is equal to n, f of c2 is equal to n, f of c3 is equal to n. Oops, there we go, c3. So it doesn't tell you um, how many uh, numbers there are, it just says uh, there exists. So this is called an existence theorem. It also doesn't tell you how to find it, it just tells you that it exists. Okay, so let's do an example. And we're just basically going to show that the equation, and let's just say x to the fourth plus x minus three equals zero, has a solution in the interval one, two. Okay, so solution. But to basically show that this equation has a solution in this interval. So to do that, uh, if we want to do it like formally, we're going to set f of x equal 
to the left-hand side of the equation. So f of x is equal to x to the fourth plus x minus 3. So note this is continuous. Note f is continuous, let's put Kant, on the closed interval 1, 2. Also, natural thing to do is look at f of a and f of b. So f of a would be f of 1, f of b would be f of 2, because this is a and b. So also f of 1 is equal to 1 plus 1 minus 3, which is minus 1. Notice that uh, that is less than 0. And f of 2 is equal to 2 to the 4th plus 2 minus 3. 2 to the 4th is 16, so you get 16 plus 2, so you get 18 minus 3, which is 15, which is greater than 0. So 0 is between uh, this number and this number, right? 0 is certainly between negative 1 and 15, and these are different numbers, so we've satisfied all the criteria. We've got a continuous function on our closed interval. These are different, and 0 is between these numbers. Thus, by IVT, that's the intermediate value theorem, there exists a number C in the open interval such that f of c is equal to zero. And if you really want to make it match the theorem, um, you could say you could say something else here. You know, from here, you could say thus: f is continuous on a b. f of one is not equal to f of two. And so if you want to elaborate and make a better solution, you would say this, this, and then you would reiterate, you would say, and zero is between f of one and f of two. So these are the things we're using, right? So all three of these things, all three of these things imply there exists a number C. Then you would say, hence, there exists, hence by IVT, there exists C in 1, 2, such that f of C is equal to 0. So if you want to be more you know, precise, you would go back and you'd restate all three conditions. It's continuous. These numbers are different. 0 is between these. Hence, by the intermediate value theorem, there exists a C in the open interval such that f of C is equal to 0. So if you want to be careful with your solution, after this step, you go here and you just reiterate this. So it kind of helps to do it this way, just to really clarify what you're doing. Um, you know, most people just do this, and it's kind of understood. You know, you've already said it's continuous. These are different. Zero is between these, obviously. So by IVT, you can find some number there. So that's the idea behind the intermediate value theorem. Um, you can use it to do other things as well, but this is just one application. And again, the main idea behind IVT is that it basically says that a continuous function on a closed interval takes on every intermediate value, right? doesn't matter which value I pick here, um, it's, it's good, there's going to be a y value there, and there's a number of c such that f of that value is equal to the y value, right? You can find a c for any y value you pick here, you're going to be able to find a c value here. That's the idea. Good luck.